What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, 860 Chris, a.k.a. Juice God K, a.k.a. K with the K, and I'm back to the YouTube video, man. Hey, listen, if you are not up to speed by now, we have a new offensive coordinator, you feel me? You are finally free from the from the shackles of Brian Johnson. We got Kellen Moore, the Boise State Demon, one of my favorite college QBs of all time. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I'm very optimistic about it. Very optimistic. He came in for the Cowboys, had them putting up points, had that playing fairly well, you feel me? As for the Chargers, though, he was working with Brandon Staley, like. <laughs> Need I say more like that shit don't count. Um, on the defensive side, though, we got Vic Fangio coming in. Honestly, bro, I don't even want to get my hopes up like that too much for real because this last season, this was this was a bummer to say the least. You feel me? I had so much hope, so much high expectations. Like it was just a big letdown. But it it can't get no worse than that. Like Sean Desai and 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 Brian Johnson, like that's literal hell. It can't get no lower than that. Can't, right? It can't. You feel me? So we about to type it with Philadelphia Eagles future is extremely bright. And we gonna see why he say that. The Philadelphia Eagles finished the 2023 season with an 11 and six record and lost in the wild card round of the playoffs with a score of 32 to nine. This was a much different team by the end of the Bucks playoff game than a team that less than two months prior beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead and the Should Bills in no sense. six days. This team was much different than the team that started 10 and 1 and became the first team in NFL history to start the year 10 and 1 and finish with less than 12 wins. There was a lot of speculation on whether or not head coach Nick Sirianni would remain That's the team's crazy. head coach entering the 2024 season due to the collapse. And now that we are a few weeks removed That's from the Eagles crazy, season bro. ending, we know he is going to be the guy in 2024. They replaced former offensive coordinator Brian Johnson with Kellen Moore and former defensive coordinator Sean Desai with the man himself, Vic Fangio. I know there's been a lot of requests to dive into the Eagles situation and to break it all down. And to be completely honest, I... Listen, Nick. I'm gonna give you one more chance, bro. You feel me? It's your first little fuck-up season. But I had to give it some thought. You feel me? We went to the playoffs every year with you. Went to the Super Bowl the season prior. And this was just one fuck up season. And I don't believe you were calling the plays. I don't think Brian Johnson and Sean was doing that. So you want the nice with me, but I believe in second chances, bro. Okay? Don't fuck it up. All right, Nicholas. We wanted to wait until we found out who the coordinators were going to be for the 2024 season. Now that we have some clarity, I think the Philadelphia Eagles' future is extremely bright. I'll let my emotions get the best of me to after that game. In today's video. Now let's begin. We are starting today's video by discussing why the Eagles' future is bright, and it starts with the hiring of offensive coordinator Kellen Moore. Eagles fans were understandably frustrated with Brian Johnson down the stretch of the 2023 season and putting up 20 points or less in five of the team's final seven games of the year, including the Bucks game, of course, starts to show like, how bro, bad it was. Can you imagine, bro? Can you fucking imagine? A team with Jalen Hurts. DeAndre Swift, A.J. Brown, motherfucking De Devontae Smith. Like, bro, that's the best wide receiver duo in the league, bro. Yes, I said it. Better than the Bengals, better than the Rams, better than the Niners. You name it, bro. Why are we not... Why were we not putting up points? It's no fucking excuse. Zero excuse, especially with the line we have. The Eagles in the final weeks of the year. There's plenty of examples we can use to show why it was frustrating down the stretch, but there was a three-play scenario in particular that I thought kind of summarized the, devil the right here. months of Philly's season. They were 11-4 and four at the time, and the That's division the devil title right was very there. much in reach, and they were playing oh. the three-win Cardinals. It was 28-28 with four minutes to play, and Philly had the ball on Arizona's 20-yard line. The mindset here should be to score a touchdown, and if you're lucky, in addition to scoring a touchdown, we can run five or six total plays and take two to two and a half minutes off the clock and force Arizona and Jonathan Gannon to call timeouts to give them even less of a chance of winning the game. But it didn't work out like this, and technically this is a four-play span here, as on first and ten, DeAndre Swift ran the ball to the left side for a gain of... Did the Cardinals punt in this game? 
It's not even just an offensive thing. I don't even think the Cardinals punted in that game, bro. The fucking Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals. See, the reason I was making up my face when they brought up um my son Vic, bro, in the beginning of the vid is, bro, it's, it's a whole lot more holes than just the defensive coordinator, bro. We, we suck at tackling, coverage. Bro, like, only thing we was good at was run D, my nigga. The linebacker safeties, we... Pff. Bro, it's a whole lot of fucking holes to fill. It's a whole lot. And it's just like at the end of the season, you was trying to fix all the leaks with scotch tape. It wasn't doing a damn. You trying to get Shaq littered? <laughs> hey, yo. We going to see come this offseason, bro. Hopefully, we got some valuable free agents. We going to see if that boy, um, what's his face? Patrick Queen won't, won't resign with the Ravens or something like that. Get some good draft picks. You feel me? Uh, Cooper, um, Terry on Arnold, maybe. I know Dallas Turner going to be off the board by, by the time it's our pick. I think we got like what? 22nd pick? If we had a good offseason, bro, then I'll start getting my hopes. But for now, I'm just staying content, level headed. My attitude is, is plateaued right now. Feel me? Just got to see the results. Zero, but on the play left tackle, Jordan Mailata was called for holding, and it was a good call as you can see him clearly hold Zayvon Collins as he was in progress of bringing Swift down for a tackle for loss. And it happens. Every offensive lineman commits a holding penalty. This backed up Philly to a first and 20 and with the ball on Arizona's 30 yard line. With playmakers like A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, and Dallas Goddard, Brian Johnson dialed up a quarterback run, which Jalen Hurts took for a gain of four yards. Second and 16 isn't ideal, but it's not the end of the world when you have two Pro Bowl caliber receivers. Second and 16 is now here, and they call an option play, and Jalen makes the right This read. was the screen, He's right? The Cardinals defender being right there to get a hat on Kenneth Gainwell, leaving Jalen one option, and that is to keep the football. There's nowhere to go, and from first and 20 and a minor setback from a holding penalty, we now have third and 19. At this, this was point, the screen. The best option is to try and get 10 yards back to make the field goal for Jake Elliott a little closer and to make it a 31-28 game and hope the defense holds. Third and 19 is here, and Brian Johnson calls his signature screenplay, and Kenneth Gainball makes the catch for a gain of three yards, and in the process, <laughs> star receiver Devonta Smith gets hurt. When I was watching this whole scenario play out live, I was fuming for Eagles fans because it's not an exaggeration to say all of this was preventable. One quarterback run with Jalen to try and catch the defense off guard in what looked to be a clear passing situation Murphy's is, law. whatever, fine, go for it. You got four yards, and if you're lucky, you can get 15 yards in the next two plays to get a fourth and one situation to do the signature tush push to ensure you get the win, or at least the first down and touchdown at minimum. Back-to-back -back runs in this situation was terrible, and a screen in which your 170-pound receiver turns his back to guys that are 250 pounds. I ain't even gonna lie, though, bro. This game should not have been close. What really turned the titles when Devontae Smith dropped that fucking ball? It was like, what, 21-6? We could have been 28-6. The Cardinals would have never got momentum. That game would have been a blowout. Is a recipe for disaster. While Kellen Moore won't necessarily lead this team to be the highest scoring offense in the league, one thing Kellen is good at is putting his players in position to succeed. That's one reason I like this hire a lot and one reason why I think the Eagles' future is as bright as it can be. The Chargers 2023 season didn't go anything according to plan, but a lot of that was out of Kellen's hands, and for any pessimistic fans, it's not reasonable to blame Kellen Moore for the entirety of the Chargers 2023 season. Yeah, one absolutely I not. One I want to highlight in particular as to why I love this hire for the Eagles goes back to the season opener when the Chargers played the Dolphins. LA comes out in a single back look with twin tight ends to the field side and motions the back and both tight ends to the right side, which gave the Chargers an empty and had their top two receivers in Keenan Allen and Mike Williams on the boundary side. When running back Josh Kelly and the tight ends were motioning out, pass rusher Jalen Phillips went with them, and Jalen is a very good pass rusher, and lining him up one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, listen. I seen motion. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> I haven't seen that in our offense in, in a while. You feel me? I'm, that shit foreign to me at this point. I'm sold, my nigga. Welcome aboard. 
Fuck. With Some variety. Inviting disaster for Miami. Let me see about this, though. Realizes it's probably going to be a zone coverage call at the bottom of the screen and a cover one up top with the safety helping between Mike and Keenan. This play design is brilliant because you can see Keenan slow his release off the line of scrimmage, which allowed Mike Williams to make his cut in his route while simultaneously bringing the safety down and giving Keenan Allen a one-on-one -on -one with linebacker David Long Jr. I like David a lot as a player, but matching him up with Keenan okay. is not a recipe for success for the defense, and Keenan wins this rep and it's a gain of 36. Seeing this type of pre-play motion and utilization of weaponry will be extremely refreshing in Philly, rather than calling screens for Devontae and AJ and expecting them to do the rest. Not only Very that, refreshing. This may be surprising considering how many screens and short. I swear, bro, we just won all of those eleven games on skill. Believe it or not, Jalen was fourth in completion percentage on passes thrown between ten and nineteen yards from the line of scrimmage in twenty twenty three, or what is referred to as the intermediate part of the field. He was only behind Lamar Jackson, Brock Purdy, and Patrick Mahomes. Out of ninety six, that passes, AJ catch was different. In this range in twenty twenty three, only one was perfectly accepted. plays ball. There was a lot of talk this year about how much Jalen turned the ball over as he would go on to finish with 15 interceptions. <clears throat> now, hold on, hold on. Let's really talk about it, though. Let's really talk about it, though. Can we please stop acting like Jalen Hurts is bad? Please? Like, this man was not set up for success at all this season. Can we please stop acting like he's bad? Man? Like, what the fuck? He ain't played bad in a wild card game. Okay, he has his fumbles occasionally and shit, but, bro, he's not a bad quarterback at all. Talking about year one, read QB, uh, da, da, da. bro. You brought us to the Super Bowl game. You brought us to the Super Bowl. If it wasn't for um Joe Burrow in college, he would have won Heisman. Like he's not a bad fucking quarterback at all. At all. One hundred twenty six point three pass rating. That's bad. Shit. A talk this year about how much Jalen turned the ball over as he would go on to finish with 15 interceptions, but eight of those 15 interceptions were on passes 20 or more yards down the field, which ranks second behind only Josh Allen, who finished the year with 18 interceptions. I was very big on the Eagles entering the 2023 season, and they were my preseason pick to win the Super Bowl. This roster is still loaded, and they are still one of the most talented rosters in the league. Coaching let them down in a big way at the end of the year, but my big question to any Philadelphia Eagles naysayer is, why can't they bounce back next year? They have some big contracts, yes, but their cap situation is far from bad. Per Spotrac, they currently have 18 million available, which is the 18th most in the league. If, or when, we should say, when they cut Kevin Byard, they'll save $13 million, and if they cut Avante Maddox post June 1st, they'll save $7.1 million, and that's per over the cap. Quickly, that would give them an additional 20 million, and with how many picks the Eagles have, and given they are in a win-now mode, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we saw them try and trade for a corner before the draft starts. They have four picks in the top 100, and they have three in the top 64, as they have the Saints' second round pick from a trade prior to the 2022 draft, so Philly definitely has the ammo. That was my Facts. only real complaint heading into the 2023 season was having older corners to start the year in Bradbury and Slay, and due to both aging corners and a bad defensive coordinator, it came up and bit them in the rear end as Philly yeah, bro, Bradbury is shit. Points in each. Bradbury's fucking doodle, burnt berry. I mean, definitely need a corner, bro. Absolutely, and Slay kind of he kind of regressing just a tad. Ugh. Yeah, we need a fucking corner. Of their For final real. eight games. Corner will not be the only position that has to be addressed this offseason, and both running back and linebacker will too. DeAndre Swift ran for over a thousand yards in his loan season with the Eagles, and I can't imagine there's not mutual interest in him coming back, given he is from the Philly area and went to high school at St. Joseph's Prep, which is in Philly. And now he need to come back for sure. If there's not a little bit of a hometown what? discount. This is a great situation for Swift as the fans love him. He will got a thousand yards in this scheme line and he has had success with the birds with how running back contracts are in today's NFL. Thanks to the CBA structure, which could merit an entire Yo, like imagine a thousand yards off straight inside zones and fucking draws. What can you imagine, bro? Imagine what we do if we really like get this nigga some real opportunities bro. on its own. 
there's probably not going to be a serious bidding war for Swift, and with Swift being from Philly, right, you gotta come I would back. like to think he would let his agent know that he would like to give Philly a chance to match any offer he receives, or at least to go to Howie Roseman about the offer and see what they could come up with. Even if, in the scenario, Swift leaves, he's not irreplaceable, as unfortunately no running back in today's NFL is truly irreplaceable, and there are plenty of running backs Philly could go after. Linebacker will also be a need for the Eagles this offseason, and the linebacker class in the 2024 draft isn't the best or anywhere close to what other positions in the 2024 draft are, like receiver, for example. And I know Eagles fans have been vocal about wanting Howie Roseman to take a linebacker in the first round at points throughout his tenure, but that's not plausible in the 2024 draft, and there is a real chance they can get Jeremiah Trotter Jr. from Clemson in the third round, which, yes, he is exactly who you think he is. The son of former Eagles linebacker in the early to mid-2000s, Jeremiah Trotter. So entering the 2024 season, we're looking at a few positions the Eagles have to address, which is corner, linebacker, and center, which could be hit or miss depending if Jason Kelsey retires. I'm not going to sit here and act like I have any sort of inside knowledge on this, but what I will say is with the addition of Kellen Moore, this is only going to make the Eagles offense more efficient as a whole and should improve upon an offense that finished top seven in points in 2023 and top eight in yards in 2023. And that was with several games that were effectively thrown away. Hey, look, look, look. Jason, Jason, my boy, come back, come back for another season. <laughs> <laughs> come back for another season. We ain't gonna waste this one, bro. We gonna come in locked and loaded. You feel me? Reloaded, rejuvenated, bro. Just one more, gang. Okay? You mulling it for so long. Just come on, stop praying. It. Pull up. You feel me? Let's rock out one more time, bro. This season don't count at all. This season do not count. You know you want to come back for another season, gang. Okay? Come on. I can't imagine there's going to be a murderer's row. You see your brother about to get his third and shit. You gonna really let him try to win up you like that game? Come on. Which they played the Cowboys, Chiefs, Bills, 49ers, and Cowboys, all in a span of five games, with a few of those teams coming off buys, and a few of those teams having a couple of extra days rest as they were coming off of Thursday night games, or in Philly's case, coming off of a Monday night game. I look at the Eagles entering the 2024 season and look at a team that won 11 games this year, and with a few key fixes, which they already addressed, well, simply put, there's no reason they can't improve the roster and win 12 games next year and be right back in the thick of things. This isn't a three-win team hoping they nail draft picks and hoping they can do what the Texans did in one offseason. This is a team one year removed from taking the best quarterback of this generation down to the wire in the Super Bowl, and they nearly won it. Jalen Hurts has played at an MVP level at times throughout each of the past two years and finished second in MVP voting in 2020. Bro, it's just like every time I see highlights from that game, bro. I know a lot of Eagles fans strongly dislike Mahomes, as winning a Super Bowl against your team will do that, but there's no shame in finishing second in MVP to him. Jalen still had a good year in 2023 compared to most quarterbacks, and that was with a lot of things working against not just Jalen, but the entire team. He finished the year with nearly 4,500 total yards of offense and 38 total touchdowns. But now you're telling me they hired two great coordinators that will maximize what their players can do and get the most out of them? The Eagles are going to be fine, and their future is extremely bright. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. It's only about 33% of people watching are subscribed, and it helps the channel tremendously. Until next time, please be... Listen, bro, I definitely do think the future is still bright. We just had a hiccup of a season. I feel like it could be corrected in 2024. You feel me? I feel like Vic and Kellen, they're going to definitely do a better job. It's just a personnel thing, bro. Like, if we could clean up the defense, we're going to be fine. Because our offense, we have no problem with the offense, bro. It was just the coordinator. You feel me? But once we get some safeties, linebackers, corners, we're going to be straight. Because our line... Our front, what? Now we're going to see what happened come September 2024. Oh, yeah, other news, too. We will be playing in fucking Rio de Janeiro come September, September 6th. I think it's the season opener, too. So are we going to play against, like, the Super Bowl winner or what? Like, how that going to work? Hey, I just hope it's a good time. I hope everybody comes back alive because we know how Rio is, you know? But, yeah, bro, I'm happy the game is starting to grow a little bit. You feel me? I feel like the disadvantage the NFL had is, like, calling the sport football like no one soccer is called football nationally internationally and shit i was kind of causing conflict a little bit they wasn't trying to acknowledge it as football and shit so they just they just brushed it off fuck that american ego talking about some world champions yo that's another thing too i ain't gonna lie i don't like how we do that 
Whoa, I don't like how the NFL does it. I'm going to keep it a whole buck with you because no other fucking country plays fucking football, bro, besides Canada. And, like, that's North America. Same with basketball. Actually, like, NBA, bro, you can't say world champions. I feel like it's more credible for them to say it, but even then it's just like, bro, you're not playing against teams across the, the globe, bro. It's like it's only domestic, North American. North American champions, like, you're not playing against fucking Barcelona, motherfucking Real Madrid and shit like that. You can't say world champions game. That might be the best players in the world, yes. But, hey, but anyways, Eagles, I feel like our future is bright. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Just talk to me, man.